Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and today we're going to be taking a closer look at pH. If you want to understand pH at a slightly deeper level, then stay tuned because that's what we're going to be doing here. So if you know a little bit about pH, I think most of us know that pH is an important water parameter right up there with water hardness and temperature and ammonia and nitrites and nitrates. But we're going to be looking at it a little bit deeper to give you guys more of a background as to why pH is important, what it is, and how it affects your fish. So stay tuned. So as some of you may already know, I have a master's degree in biotechnology and chemical science, and I'm an uh, assistant professor at a local college in the Chicagoland area. And what I wanted to do is take a few minutes and discuss the structure of an element, and that's gonna help us understand pH a little bit better. So if you can just bear with me, have a little bit of patience here, it's going to allow us to understand pH much better towards the end of the video. And so what we have here is an element, the structure of an element. Now this just happens to be oxygen, and it's only here as an example to, so that we can understand the general structure of an element. And so the first thing we're gonna find is the nucleus, and that's this juicy center right here, and that has some protons that are positively charged, and then we've got some neutrons in blue. Those don't have a charge, they're neutral. And the protons and neutrons in this element, that's what contributes to the element's mass. Orbiting around the nucleus, we have electrons. And we can see here, oxygen happens to have two electrons in, in an inner shell, and then they've got six more in an outer shell. And the number of electrons and the number of protons in this example are matching. Eight protons, eight electrons. Now the electrons, as you can see, they have a negative charge. And so this is the general structure of an element. And again, this is going to become important because as we start to understand and talk about pH, knowing how protons and neutrons and electrons are structured in an element, knowing where they're found is going to help us out a little bit in a few minutes. Okay, so what we have here is the pH scale. There's some things I want to point out. Thing number one, the pH scale goes from 0 to 14. And so here we've got our numbers. And what pH actually means is potential hydrogen. That's what it stands for. And so what pH is doing is it's measuring the concentration of hydrogen ions relative to the concentration of hydroxide ions. If you recall when we were talking about elements, do you remember how I used oxygen as an example? And we said that there were eight protons in the nucleus and we had eight electrons orbiting around the nucleus. Those opposite charges were attracting one another. That's an element in the ground state. What we have here, when we say something is an ion, what we're saying is that there is a difference between the number of protons that element possesses and the number of electrons that element possesses. So when we say here we have a hydrogen ion, what we are saying is this is a hydrogen that's missing an electron. And therefore it has one more proton relative to electrons and we have a positive charge. The opposite is true over here for this thing here called the hydroxide ion. We've got an oxygen and a hydrogen and it has a negative charge. It's gained an electron and therefore this has one more electron than the protons inside of their nuclei. And so that's what we mean when we say ions. Now these little brackets that you see here, that signifies the concentration of these ions. Now, if we go back to our pH scale, a couple more things we want to understand is as the numbers on the pH scale get smaller, that solution is becoming more acidic. As the pH numbers get larger, that solution is becoming more basic. Now one thing I want to point out before we move on, some of you have, may have heard the term alkaline or alkalinity and associated that term with a higher pH we need to understand that alkalinity is not the same thing as a solution with a high pH. They're similar and they work together, but it's not the same thing. When a solution has high alkalinity, what we're saying is that solution has a buffering capability to keep the pH relatively constant. And so a buffer is something that's going to allow us to keep a pH within a certain parameter. Water that is more alkaline will allow pH to stay a little bit more uh, streamlined or a little bit more consistent, all right? But it's not necessarily the same thing as saying something has a high pH. So back to our pH scale. Again, we've got, we're going from zero to 14. The smaller the number, the more acidic. The larger the number, the more basic. Over on the left-hand side, 
you're going to see how the ions figure into our pH scale. As the number gets smaller, as we get closer to one and then to zero, there are going to be more hydrogen ions in that solution. As the number gets larger and we get closer to 14, there are going to be more hydroxide ions in the solution. I think a lot of us are accustomed to thinking that an acidic solution could be dangerous, right? We've seen acids, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, react with something or take something and uh, completely break it down. And those pHs would be way up here in the ones and the twos, but we're not used to seeing something where a pH very high could do a lot of damage, but it can also be very dangerous. And so a high pH, if you ever see something labeled caustic on a container, that means that that solution contains a very high pH. So things like lime, an oven cleaner, ammonia, those all have household bleach, those all have a high pH, and they can also be dangerous. Now, next thing we're gonna do, I wanna take a look at some of the types of environments where these pH uh, numbers are found. All right, so now let's take a look at how pH is used and why it's important in the aquarium hobby, fish keeping hobby. So as we see here in this pH scale, seven is a neutral pH. That means the concentration of your hydrogen ions is equal to the concentration of hydroxide ions. The vast majority of fish that we keep in the freshwater aquarium hobby do fairly well right around a neutral pH of seven. If we were keeping African cichlids from one of the three Great Lakes, like Lake Malawi, Lake Tanganyika, or Lake Victoria, the pH that they enjoy is gonna be closer to right around an eight, maybe even an eight and a half. And so in those waters, they're going to have a higher pH. They're also gonna have a lot of dissolved solids or water hardness, something that we'll talk about in a later video. As we get lower in pH into the sixes, fives, maybe even the fours, that's some of our South American cichlids that have a lot of dissolved organic matter. And that dissolved organic matter, as it breaks down, creates acids. And so some of these fish might be found in around a pH of four, a pH of five. That might be some of your pistols. Some of your wild caught angelfish would enjoy a pH somewhere in that four to five range. Some tetras from South America might like that pH right around six or so. The important thing to understand when it comes to fish keeping, especially wild caught fish, if they're primarily found at a certain pH, that's the pH that they thrive at. That's the pH where they're gonna be able to reproduce that's where they're going to be their best. That's not to say those fish can't live at another pH if brought, if the change is brought slowly. So I'll give you an example, a good example of why pH is important. We've got some Epistogramma mendezi in our fish room. And for those of you who know Epistos, they generally like a pH right in the, anywhere between five and six and a half pH, depending on the type of Epistos. Sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. Right now we're keeping these Epistos at a pH of about 7.9. That's really high. And for those people who, who know Epistos and know how to breed them and care for them, they would say that's, that's really pushing it. Now, our fish are doing great. They're, they're showing great colors, they're active, they eat well, but they're not breeding for us. And one of the reasons why they may not be breeding for us is they can't produce viable eggs at such a high pH. In order to breed them, we'd probably have to bring that pH somewhere back into the five to five and a half range to get them to lay viable eggs and have viable fry. Our cichlids enjoy that pH of right around a seven, nine to about an eight, two, and they're doing great. And most of our, our cichlids from Africa, our African cichlids are happily breeding. They're again, showing great color, great activity. And so one of the great pieces of advice I think uh, that you can, that we could give is keep fish that enjoy the pH that you naturally have. Again, stable pH is far more important than a pH that is fluctuating. Could I get a pH of around five, five and a half by adding in uh, certain buffers and chemicals like pH down in that tank? Yes. Would I have a difficult time maintaining that pH long, long term? Probably. And so I prefer to have a stable pH in the environments uh, in which uh, in the environments that we keep. And I think that goes a long way to keeping our fish healthy. So I want to explain a little bit more why it's important to keep pH stable. The scale that we see here that goes from zero to 14, it's a logarithmic scale. 
And what that means is every time this number changes, and so let's just say we started out at a pH of seven, and we decrease the pH to six. What that's doing, that's not a change of one in the pH scale, that's actually a change of 10. It's a 10 times increase in the number of hydrogen ions in a solution, and it's a 10 times decrease in the number of hydroxide ions in that solution, and that's a pretty big change. If we were gonna go down to, let's say, from seven to five, that's another 10 times change, and so that would equal 100 times difference in the number of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions in that solution. And so the point here is that this is constantly fluctuating. That's a lot of change. That's what stresses out our fish. If we just keep it consistent, but again, within the range of pH that a fish can enjoy, that's gonna go a lot further in keeping those fish healthy than it would be to constantly have this fluctuating back and forth. And so for us, we tend to stay away from adding chemicals to our water that would adjust our pH. So how do we, ch how do we adjust pH? Well, our pH comes out of the tap right around an eight. That's great for African cichlids. That's why we keep a lot of African cichlids from the three Great Lakes. If I were to try and increase the pH, I might add some crushed coral to the substrate. That would help buffer the pH and increase it a little bit. Now for us, that's not necessary because it's so high. So that would be one option. The chemicals are another option, but I think it's a, a relatively poor option to use. If we wanted to decrease the pH, one of the things that I would probably do in our tanks is we run a dehumidifier in our fish room. That dehumidifier is collecting water without any water hardness, and that water tends to have a much lower pH. If I were going to lower the pH, as I did water changes on those tanks, I would probably add some of that dehumidifier water to that tank. And the key here is, one, it would be a little bit of water, and two, it would be a very slow change over time. I wouldn't just do a 30% a, a water change and then add RO water in its place, because that would be a drastic change in water hardness, and that would be a drastic change in pH. I talked to some people who have killed a lot of fish by adding RO water, but doing it too quickly. If that's something you're going to do, you have to make sure that you monitor your water parameters on a daily basis and really make sure that you've got, again, consistency in your water parameters. We're not looking for large changes over short periods of time. Very slow, very methodical, testing water constantly to make sure we're getting that dialed in. Uh, other ways to lower pH, uh, you could add organics like catapa leaves, uh, driftwood to a certain extent will slightly lower pH and I can tell you we've got driftwood in a lot of our tanks and again our tap water is right around an 8 uh, for pH but even the tanks where we've got driftwood and in some cases some fairly large pieces of driftwood in relatively small tanks the pH didn't really change much at all those tanks are generally running right around a 7, 8, 7, 7, maybe a 7.5 where they would normally be an 8. So it hasn't been a drastic change in pH, but it's been slight. It's not something that's going to get you to a, from a 7 down to a 5 most likely or even a, an entire change in 7 to 6, but it will change pH slightly in some cases. And that's due to the wood breaking down. Again, if we go back to our example of the South American cichlids, the reason why some of those waters are so acidic is there's a lot of organic material, sticks, downed trees, leaves that are building up on the bottom of those organic environment, or those aquatic environments, and they're Break, as they're breaking down, they're releasing acids into the water. And so this is just a general overview of pH. Again, we wanted to address some of the things that uh, affect fish when it comes to pH. All right, so real quick, I just wanted to summarize the highlights when it comes to pH in an aquatic environment. Again, we've got this pH scale. It goes from 0 to 14. The lower the number is, the more hydrogen ions you have in a solution and the more acidic that solution is. As you go up in value, your pH is becoming more basic, and we've got more hydroxide ions relative to hydrogen ions in that solution. The scale that we see here is logarithmic, and so every time you change that number, you're changing the 
concentration of hydroxyl or hydroxide ions or hydrogen ions by a factor of 10, not by a factor of one. And so you can get very large scale changes as you adjust pH. The vast majority of fish that we keep in the freshwater fish keeping hobby are happy somewhere in the pH range. I would say this range here, somewhere between an eight and a six, most of them right around a seven. I would say in my experience, most of them do a little bit better, slightly above seven if the ideal is seven than below. But the range is somewhere between a six and an eight. Most of our fish can handle that. Our African Rift Lake cichlids are going to be closer to an eight. A lot of our South American cichlids may enjoy a pH uh, neutral or less. All right, so I know that was a lot to bear. But again, we wanted to give you a better understanding of pH. Just take it a little bit above the normal, hey, seven is neutral, here's the acid, here's a base. So hopefully you understood that a little bit more and it'll give you a little bit more information as you venture out into your fish keeping hobby. We wanted to say thank you once again for watching. Wanted to say thank you for all the support. There will be more videos like this where we discuss in more detail water hardness. We may even look at uh, ammonia and nitrite and nitrates in more detail. So if you like this video, share it, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.